The ideas presented in this video may be used by anyone without compensating or even acknowledging me, because here are products and services we want. An intelligent phone is a phone with two brains, the cell phone brain and the app brain. The app brain acts like the computer and runs the apps and camera, stores most of the private information, and does not connect to Wi-Fi, cellular, or Bluetooth. The cell phone brain doesn't have Wi-Fi or Bluetooth and only uses cellular for calls and text. The idea is that the cell phone brain has fewer connections to hack and, if hacked, can't spread the malware to the app brain. The cell phone brain would be put on an airplane mode via a physical switch so that it couldn't be remotely turned on. Both brains would be able to send sound to the speaker and auxiliary jack, but physically unable to receive information from those services. Both brains would receive power from the battery, but not be able to physically send a signal back. Ditto on the mic, which would have a physical switch on the side that would disconnect the mic from the cell phone brain, flip it on to answer or make a call, and flip it off to hang up. Since both brains would need to interact with the touch screen, the solution is to only be able to physically do one at a time, again via a physical switch. If all this seems too elaborate, remember that it is to protect privacy. People will put up with some things if they can get something more important. I've heard that cell phones are, by law, supposed to automatically store its data on any computer it is plugged into. If that isn't true, then this phone won't have that as a feature. If it is true, warnings should be posted, and if possible, two ports should be installed. One would have access to the cell phone brain to do that auto backup, but have one of those rubber covers so it won't be connected by accident. The other would connect to the app brain and not automatically download anything into the computer. Too many copies of such files pose a personal and national security risk. Neither brain should accept any programs trying to load. Files only can be loaded. This, of course, will mean that all functions and apps must be built in. Now, on to my suggestions. To help the owner know which brain is connected to the touchscreen, the cell phone brain should have a set picture of a phone in the menu and lock screens, and the keypad should be lower on the lock screen. Neither lock screen should allow a password to begin with 911. If that number is dialed while it is on the app brain, a graphic should pop up to remind you to switch to the cell phone brain. If that number is dialed on the cell phone brain's lock screen, then it should immediately offer to call or text 911. Faster for emergencies, and good if your little kid needs to call in an emergency. While normally I should be able to set speakerphone as a default, all 911 calls should not default to that in case of a threatening individual. They can always switch it to speakerphone if needed. A 911 call should also automatically display in night mode so that it is less visible to an intruder and switch ringtone to vibrate until reset by the owner for the same reason. Parental controls should allow the parents to view even deleted call logs and text. Block certain numbers or block all numbers the parent hasn't entered in. Parents should also be able to set times when the phone can't call slash receive calls, like at night or during school. Except, of course, parent approved numbers like themselves or grandparents. Of course, the phone should be programmed so that the child can always call 911, the Poison Control Center, the National Suicide Hotline, etc. The app brain should run the camera, audio recorder, and type word compatible documents. Some people don't have any other way to type those. Parental controls for the app brain should not only control scheduling and be able to block selected apps, but could also prevent downloading files to or from the brain without permission. That controls what winds up in the, on the app brain and prevents the kid from sharing certain photos. Please make sure the camera includes grid and level options. Also keep the shutter button fixed in one corner of the screen so that switching from portrait to landscape won't make you hunt for the button. Also, I'm surprised I haven't seen Universal Remote as an app. Put an infrared sensor on the end and you have a rechargeable remote that can be set 
with named devices. No more keeping track of that code list and even manually setting it up would be easier. Plus, universal remotes have so many buttons for all the different devices, but can't do it all. The app could select all the relevant to the device buttons and even tuck some away until needed. Other apps should include calculator, flashlight, timer, stopwatch, level, address book, and decibel meter. A basic video editor, the ability to read PDFs, EPUB, and Mobi books, and maybe some preloaded public domain books. Reference materials and a first aid manual would be good, MP3 player, pitch pipe, metronome, and a simple piano. World clock, conversion tables, and a variety of games including chess and maybe even board games from other countries, with the rules included for all the games of course. Use your imagination. The more and better apps you put on this thing, the more likely you are to get people to buy it. A lot of work on the front end, but then you don't have to build an app infrastructure and make security updates. Of course, using the intelligent phone as a starting point, there are five alternative designs. One is the IntelliNet phone. The cell phone brain would then include internet, Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth. Or you could do a smartphone copy using some of the design ideas. Then there are the pocket tabs. A pocket tab is my generic term for a tablet the size of a phone, like the iPod Touch. The market has not favored a smart pocket tab, it seems, and I believe that an IntelliNet pocket tab would suffer the same fate, because pocket tabs are basically cheaper substitutes for phones and are mostly aimed at children. And how many parents are going to be concerned about a child having a cell phone who wouldn't also be concerned with a child having a mobile internet device? However, the intelligent pocket tab would, by definition, have no Wi-Fi, cellular, or Bluetooth. This would also mean that it would only need the app brain. Such a device might have a market. So there you have it. The intelligent phone, I believe, would help with personal privacy and even with national security implications of a nation's citizens carrying hackable computers everywhere with them. To help protect both individual privacy and national security, a country's electronics should, as much as possible, be built in country and never imported from a nation hostile to freedom. If you'd like this product or service to be available, let people know by giving this video a thumbs up. And if you know someone who could do something about it, share this video.